I want to take a few minutes to describe some recent trends in data and analytics, and along the way, uh, give you some highlights of uh, talks that will take place at this conference over the next two days. This is our ninth conference in the New York City area. And as you can see, we continue to build a community of people and companies interested in using data technologies. Um, so we've always uh, showcased companies who are uh, using data to transform their uh, operations and their uh, uh, companies. And uh, we also have always taken pride in our neutrality. So we always try to give you a complete picture of all the tools and methods available, so ranging from managed services in the cloud, proprietary software, and open source technologies. So we all know that uh, the data-hungry technologies that we all read about, so this includes AI and machine learning, are essentially useless without access to reliable, uh, high-quality data. And uh, this community here leads the way in building and using world-class data infrastructure. So let me start by uh, giving you a quick tour through what's happening in these foundational technologies. So the rise of 5G and IoT and the emergence of new data types from computer vision, so these are images and, and video, and speech, speech technologies, so audio, uh, means that the technologies we have and use need to be able to cope with many more different data sources coming at us at real time. So the good news is that the uh, community here is building technology that is continuing to develop to cope with these new uh, challenges. So Apache Spark, Kafka, and Flink remain popular open source projects for data ingestion, data processing, and ETL. Uh, over the past year, I've started to come across companies who are beginning to use a new project called Apache Pulsar, a system designed to process and analyze and deliver data from an ever-expanding array of services and applications. So there will be talks on Pulsar and, all, and on all of these other open source projects, as well as other, other tools from uh, our uh, sponsors and cloud providers and our partners. So later this afternoon, for example, we'll have a talk on Trill, which is the crown jewel of Microsoft's streaming pipeline. So it, over the past year, I've had many inquiries from companies interested in data catalogs, data governance, and data lineage. So basically, uh, companies are looking for solutions that will allow them to understand what data they have, who can access it, and where their data has come from. Uh, and also, the, uh, the rise of machine learning and the importance of ethics, privacy, and security have made data engineers and data scientists much more conscious about the importance of data lineage and provenance. So we have many exhibitors here, including Alation, O'Hara, and Muta, and speakers who can help you understand the range of possible features for data governance, catalogs, and lineage. So for example, this afternoon, we have back-to-back -back talks from LinkedIn and Uber describing their systems for, for metadata and data governance. And Sandeep Utam Jandani and his colleagues will explore Superglue, which is Intuit's homegrown data, proce data processing and data lineage framework. So one of the things that uh, I'm going to emphasize in my short talk here is the rise of automation. So for example, machine learning is being used to improve data quality. There's an open source project called HoloClean. Uh, it's a probabilistic data cleaning framework uh, considered by many to be the state of the art system for using machine learning for automatic error detection and repair. So data management and storage also remain areas where startups and companies continue to invest and improve upon existing technologies. So you have time series databases like Timescale and InfluxDB, or graph databases like TigerGraph that continue to attract users and expand on their existing use cases. Also, as the number of storage systems grow, companies are looking into data orchestration. So these are basically systems that abstract data access across your many different storage systems 
virtualizes all your data and presents the data via standardized APIs. So data lakes, which was uh, a subject of this conference over the last few years, the idea was to store everything in one place so your data team can unlock the value of that data using BI queries or machine learning. But it turns out that the data can be very messy, right? So, and uh, those early data lakes uh, had the problem that the data quality that resided in them was quite low. And furthermore, those earlier systems had limitations. They couldn't easily cope with updates and inserts or recomputations that uh, are required due to mistakes and failures. So th today, uh, the major cloud providers and, and companies like our partners, Cloudera or Kubel or Snowflake, are beginning to improve on data lakes. I'm also happy to see open source projects like Iceberg and specifically Data Lake begin to address the limitations of these previous uh, generation technologies. So in particular, data, Delta Lake can be used with your existing data lake. It unifies batch and streaming. And more importantly, it addresses that fundamental challenge, which is De Delta Lake lets you incrementally improve the quality of your data until it is ready for consumption. And you can do that on an ongoing basis or on an ad hoc basis. And for companies who are increasingly using machine learning, Delta Lake also supports data versioning and data lineage. So now you've got your data collected, processed, and stored. Uh, let's look at what's happening in terms of uh, analytics and machine learning. So there's also a lot of uh, machine learning beginning to be used in the area of business intelligence and visualization. So in particular, imagine a scenario where you have millions of metrics. So it's really impossible to uh, uh, make sense of all these metrics in the dashboard. So what uh, companies are beginning to do and researchers are beginning to do is use machine learning to surface the right alerts, highlight the right features, or even draw the right charts. So for example, there's uh, speakers here from Anadot and Sisu, uh, two companies who both use machine learning to help uh, you make sense of mountains of metrics and features. We also have many, many talks on BI and visualization, including a se session from Akshay Rai of LinkedIn, who will describe their business-wide monitoring platform. Machine learning. So there's lots of automation happening in machine learning. So you already heard me highlight Holoclean, which is used to improve data quality. But essentially, uh, there's uh, a lot of automation happening in each of the components of uh, these major machine learning platforms. So for example, many of you have probably heard of AutoML, which is, is usually, descri usually describes tools for automatic model selection and hyperparameter tuning. But essentially, uh, tools for machine learning is actually quite an exciting area for startups and companies. So you have tools for model development like MLflow and Comet ML. Uh, but there are also many, many tools now for and open source projects for model ops, which includes model serving and monitoring. There's even a, a startup here called Superwise AI that uses machine learning to help you monitor your machine learning models in production. So one area that I think is less discussed uh, by uh, our community is model governance. Uh, I think that as uh, companies begin to use uh, machine learning more widely, particularly companies in highly regulated industries like finance and healthcare, tools for model governance will be quite critical. So we have many sessions on the many facets of modern machine learning platforms. Uh, so for example, Modi Fania of Intel will give a talk on their internal machine learning platform, which is widely used by several groups across many different countries. Venkata Gunu of Comcast and Har Harish Dodi of Datatron will go through the various components of uh, the machine learning platforms, including uh, detailed description of model governance. So an area where uh, researchers and practitioners have coalesced is in developing tools and techniques for de-risking machine learning. So here again, we have many great sessions. 
Mickey O'Bron of Solando will give you a nice overview of tools for fair and privacy preserving machine learning and analytics. Uh, the team from the Future of Privacy Forum in conjunction with Immuta will host back-to-back -back sessions on privacy and security in machine learning and advanced analytics. So I've barely scratched the surface. We have another uh, outstanding program for you. So for example, we have many, many sessions on machine learning itself, developing models, uh, fine-tuning models, and deploying models to production. But don't forget to network while you're here at the conference uh, with our speakers, with the many interesting companies in our expo hall, and of course, with your fellow attendees. So for the next two days, this is your data community.